Thank you. Yes. Uh, you have to talk to me. Yes, thank you. Uh, well, I'm very grateful to the organizers for inviting me to give this talk in this very nice place, a very interesting conference. So, uh, it is about uh, some mechanism of uh, pseudo gaps and superconductivity in high DC rates, which I would like to propose. And it differs from what has been said here and before by, by the following most important feature is that uh, cue balls, sorry, uh, that cue balls are non-topological solitons in that sense that while previous speakers were considering vacuum state as long-ranged and then monopoles, dions, and so on, as uh, the imperfections inside the long-range vacuum state, the cubos is just the opposite object because the, they are short-range object in the chaotic long-range state. And that's the major difference. So, well, th these are uh, the people who either were working uh, with me along these times or just inspired and uh, I'm from Moscow and from Leiden uh, simultaneously. <laughs> and uh, the results uh, are published here and uh, are in process also of further publications. So uh, I hope I'll manage to, to tell uh, the story about the emergence of Euclidean cue balls. Uh, and okay, to, to tell it shortly, the major idea is the following. Uh, what usually people consider is, for example, uh, spin, fermion, electron, phonon, um, uh, electron, charge fluctuations. Uh, this is all inside the so-called Eliasberg scheme of thinking, where you have uh, glue bosons of whatever nature with which electrons are exchanging or holes are exchanging and this causes the attraction into condensation into either Cooper or local pairs. And then condensate of local or Cooper pairs forms the superconducting condensate. Now, the, what is new here is that it is shown that these bosons may also condense. And then electrons are moving in the field of these condensed bosons. And th this enhances high TC very strongly because now electrons are not exchanging with single chaotic bosons but with condensed bosic condensate of glue bosons. And why this happens? This happens because as will be shown here it is self-consistent process that uh, pairing of fermions causes these bosons to attract each other and that's why they condense into these uh, power balls, which are two balls. And that's the whole story, actually. So to go further on, uh, well, I, I hope we consider the emerging uh, properties. Well, first of all, the machinery and the emerging properties, which are already uh, published in the process uh, of these uh, properties of cue balls that uh, cue balls, these are uh, con locally condensed glue bosons co that contain uh, density of Cooper pairs. So these are globulars with uh, uh, superconducting condensates which form the gas, a gas in the sample uh, at high enough temperatures. Then it is shown also that the concentration, the density of local condensates is proportional to TC, which corresponds to a Mura plot. It is also uh, demonstrated that above TC and below T star, there is a diamagnetic response of these globals with superconducting condensates. Uh, so the, this also corresponds to the experiment of Lee and others. And also, uh, it is possible to calculate the wave function of Cooper pairs inside the cubos, and it proves to be that it has starfish shape, 
which uh, is al also experimentally found uh, recently, and this is paper by, uh, I, I forgot, by, by Lee, I think, 2018. Uh, finally, there would be some conclusions. And what is also interesting is that when the first uh, paper on this uh, subject was published in uh, Antonio's journal Condensed Matter, uh, the, there was a report from NASA that they see cubos in the center of uh, galaxies uh, that could be the source of dark matter. But, uh, okay, so let's uh, go further. So what happens? Uh, the idea of cubos was really proposed by uh, nuclear people, nuclear theory people, uh, like uh, quark and gluon theories. Uh, so what we need is uh, scalar uh, complex field, which could be the either the local density of spin or local density of fluctuating charge. And this is the simplest uh, Matsu uh, Matsubara time, so it's uh, finite temperature uh, action, Euclidean action for this field. Now, this field is coupled to uh, fermions. Uh, this way of coupling could be obtained by Hubbard Stratonovich decoupling of uh, density, density of spin spin fluctuation of electrons on site or on the nearest site. So, this is just the coupling term which is linear in this field. And then if you look at this expression, you see it is quadratic with respect to fermions, and therefore they could be formally con uh, integrated out. And this gives the effective uh, Euclidean action for this uh, scalar uh, complex field, which obtains this extra term. And this extra term uh, proves to be negative when electrons or coals produce Cooper pairs, and this will be shown below. And this negative term means uh, uh, attraction between uh, the excitations of this uh, scalar field, or magnons, or chargons, or whatever, phonons. Now, wh what is this term? This term is, uh, so mu sub zero squared is not chemical potential. It is the mass of the field. It means because it is short range order, so uh, this uh, coefficient is inverse proportional to the square of, say, spin or charge of or latest ordering uh, correlation length, which is assumed to be finite. Now, uh, this is, as usual, uh, Gorkov's uh, anomalous Green's function, which is wave function of the Cooper pair uh, in the center of mass. <coughs> so, uh, and then uh, bare pair in bosom uh, the propagator of the parent boson now would be the correlator of this uh, field, uh, scalar field. And the major idea is to find saddle point configuration, which means quasi classical scalar field, meaning it is uh, strong because it, it is local condensate of these bosons. So that's actually the whole story. And the major diagrams of this type were calculated by. In Ashberg, but you for phones. Uh, and this is a contribution of Cooper pairing to the free energy uh, of the system. So, uh, well what happens? Why uh, cue balls are finite? So, now, as I said, this is a scalar field, but it is complex. And uh, if you look at this uh, action, it is manifestly U1 uh, symmetric, so it means if you shift phase of this field in all points simultaneously in space, uh, nothing changes. So, but we consider that this phase, which shifts uh, simultaneously on the space, is linear dependent on Matsubara time. And omega is usual bother frequency for Matsubara time, because we know that uh, classical or semi-classical fields uh, should be uh, periodic in Matsubara time with, with the period 1 divided by temperature. Now, n is important. We, we shall see that n is integer number. We can start from n equals 1, but then we'll, we shall see 
that when temperature lowers, you keep this frequency uh, finite when it uh, ends to, to grow. So that the product would be constant. <coughs> Uh, now, what happens uh, if we consider this U1 symmetry? U1 symmetry corresponds to some noter uh, invariant conser conservation law. And this conservation law is ju just the time component of this current. So this is the current uh, of this boson. And it proves to be that it is conserved. It is possible to check that this action conserves the tau Matsubara time component of this current. And uh, then, if we uh, just substitute here this expression with the uh, phase linear proportional with time, we get this conservation law. So meaning Q equals uh, product of this frequency omega times amplitude squared of, of this field times volume of the system, of the whole sample. Uh, sorry, of the cubal. We, we shall see that this would be the volume of the cubal. Now, what is the physical meaning of this parameter Q? Q is actually proportional to the number of glue bosons condensed into the cubal. So, in case of nuclear theory, these were uh, numbers of uh, S quarks that condensed due to interaction with the gluons, forming the asymmetry of uh, matter and time matter in our universe. So um, now let us see how, yes, and this is uh, for Minkowski uh, space for zero temperature was first proposed by Rosen and by Sidney Coleman long ago. Now uh, what happens? So when we can oh, sorry. Uh, no, 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 no. I yes. So what happens? Uh, now we write down uh, Euclidean action, but substitute in here the kinetic energy of this scalar field using that conserved quantity. And then we get this nice expression. So you see here, because of the conservation of this uh, boson number inside cubal, volume is in denominator, while uh, this part contains volume in the numerator. So it is obvious that if this uh, bracket is positive, there is a minimum in this expression. And this minimum gives you the volume of the cubal, which is finite. So then we, we have this expression for the volume of the cubal. What is interesting that this volume is inverse proportional to, to the uh, amplitude squared of this uh, both uh, which is charge spin of phonon field inside the cubal, and this actually corresponds to what was reported recently by uh, Bianconi, Campi, and Cautious that uh, when they do spectroscopy, they see that the intensity of the scattering of the uh, charge density wave droplet uh, is inverse proportional to its volume. So the smaller the volume, the higher the intensity. This is exactly this. Well, the same expression. Now, what is interesting is that when we substitute here the conservation law, we get self consistency condition from which the uh, amplitude of this uh, field, uh, the glue bosom field, uh, could be found. And what is also interesting is that if there would be no fermions uh, that produce interaction between bosons, this term would be absent. And then you see that uh, the uh, energy of the uh, scalar field insi inside the cubal would be just additive. So it would be just proportional to the number of bosons, which is true for non-interacting bosons. But this term produces uh, interaction between bosons, and that's why they stuck together, and cubal becomes stable. So let's see why cubals are stable. Uh, this is the picture, so this is obtained numerically because this effective energy was calculated using summation of uh, infinite number of these loop diagrams with the propagator, which we still do not know because it contains so consistently the amplitude of this blue bottom field, which we want to know to find. And this is interesting. So this parabola would be the energy of the 
uh, glue bosons if they do not start together. And due to attraction, there appears a minimum, so this parabola suddenly drops down. And this is a local minimum which makes this uh, cube ball stable. Why? Because if, so uh, stable for finite amplitude of this M field. Why it is stable? Because imagine that we have here some number of uh, glue bosons corresponding to these amplitudes. And now imagine that they explode. So then the energy will be much higher. And therefore, cube ball is stable because uh, there is no energy to explode him for free. Now, uh, when the first minimum appears, this is the temperature where the first cube balls appear, and this we call T star temperature, wi which uh, could be understood as the beginning of the uh, pseudo gap state. Uh, I I'll, I'll tell later why it is uh, relevant to pseudo gap state. But when this minimum f uh, with lowering temperature finally touches the zero, it means that it is first order phase transition into superconducting state. And so this gives you the temperature of superconducting transition, but in reality it could be at some high temperature when the cube balls fo form infinite cluster, which is Johnson junction link cube balls. Uh, I'll tell you later. So now, what we are going to do, uh, sorry, uh, what we are going to do, uh, yes, let us speak about why it is pseudo gap state. So, what is on the left? On the left is, uh, I'm sorry, on the left is uh, this self consistency equation, as, as I said, we obtained it above, which defines the uh, amplitude of the blue boson. And uh, this G times nu, nu is the density of bare electrons or holes at the Fermi level. G is the fact coupling constant between uh, Fermi, uh, fermions and M field. And for different values of, so this is growing, so these curves are uh, plotted uh, in the axis omega m divided by omega, so the amplitude scales with omega, and uh, each curve corresponds to greater coupling strength. So what is interesting here, that you he uh, you suppose we fix the strength, like g equals, say, 6.3. Then, you see, there is this curve, but there is also another one here. In between, there is nothing, no solution. It means that there is an interval of temperatures for, for these coupling strengths uh, below T star and down to some temperature which I call T star 2 uh, in which there is a cubal gas uh, with positive energy. So these are local size fluctuations with positive energy. Now, this curve corresponds to opposite case. Uh, so it starts from Tc and below to see, you have cubal gas with negative energies, meaning that they should condense and make a bulk superconductor. Uh, and what is also interesting is that, uh, so then, uh, that we shall see how uh, this uh, amplitude of the M field is related directly to the uh, gap in the fermionic spectrum. And so we see, we shall show that inside the cubal, uh, of course, the, the fermionic spectrum is gapped. Outside is not gapped. So that's why it is super gap first. Uh, now, let's see what happens. Okay, th this is the Albert machinery and to just to show you the image, what happens. So uh, if you look at this Hamiltonian interaction between M field and fermions, this is usual uh, electron hole coupling for, say, spin wave or charge density wave. But you see, when you have two electron holes, they can uh, resonate into two electrons and two holes for the Cooper pair. And this is actually the process which we are considering here. Uh, th this is, uh, okay, th this is the Fermi surface. So this is D wave uh, direction, nodal direction, and this is anti nodal direction. And the simplest model considered here is the nested hotspots in the uh, 
and I know the direction on the Fermi surface. So why it is considered? Because then everything could be done analytically to, to the very end. So now, okay, uh, this is the Lyashberg equation, but with the, uh, instead of phonon Green's function, we have now propagator of m phi. And it proves to be, it is exact that then the uh, anomalous Gorkov function, which is wave function of the Kubo curves inside cubos, it obeys this Matthew equation. So it's showing the like equation, but in uh, Matsubara time. So it's a one dimensional equation. Then this is eigenvalue for Matthew equation because uh, this uh, function is odd because this is fermionic function. So we need to find the first uh, excited level of this uh, potential. And it gives you the relation between the gap uh, in the fermionic spectrum and the amplitude of the M field. And what is important here is that you see that when the ampli that, uh, amplitude of the M field should be immediately greater than omega for gap to be non zero. Otherwise, there is no solution. So uh, this gives you the start. So next, uh, okay, it, it is possible to, to solve this equation also uh, numerically uh, to reduce it to cubic equation with uh, this coefficient, which I call effective coupling strength. So this is coupling strength uh, uh, scaled by this omega. And okay, everybody knows the solution of cubic equation. We get this curve. As, uh, so this is curve. Uh, which gives you solutions of this equation, meaning the two temperature for each coupling strength. And you see, it reminds this one, but only half of it. So the question, where is the second half? And um, also, it is important that we know from uh, John Tranquada, a old paper long ago, this inverse correlation length for spin waves. And it gives you the energy scale for this temperatures which are found here. And they're in the right interval. So it gives you optimal superconducting temperature is a range of 100, 200 kelvins and T star in the range of 200, 400 kelvins. Uh, now, how the second part of the diagram happens? Well, uh, you remember there were papers by um, several people who considered so-called extended one of uh, singularity for weak coupling model. Of course, we are not the couple model. But what is important here is that this uh, effective coupling strength contains density of state. And if doping shifts the uh, uh, leads to crossing of the one whole singularity, it means that with doping, the strength, the coupling strength first uh, grows and then decreases again. And so if you unfold this uh, plot where instead of k, you put x, the bottom strength, you get second half. Because you unfold this, because here, actually, when we go along the dotting, in this plot, we go uh, forward and then backwards. And that's why we get this uh, second part. Now, we move plot, OK. Uh, because uh, we found uh, exact expression for the uh, pair uh, Green's function, which is wave uh, function of the Cooper pair in the center of mass, we can calculate the density of uh, condensed Cooper pairs inside the cubos, and uh, I can tell what does it all mean. Uh, finally, we get that this density is uh, directly proportional to TC, which corresponds to this linear part of a more plot uh, for uh, high TC phase. Now, what is written here, if you recollect, that m should be immediately greater than omega for the pseudo gap to be non zero. We, we get this ex exact expression, analytical expression, close to t star. And uh, between the amplitude of m field, so you see the blue boson amplitude should be finite immediately, while uh, the uh, gap and uh, the density start from zero, the second of the phase transition at t star. Uh, so, what is the consequence? Because we know the wave function, we can calculate it is its shape in the real space. 
And it is funny that even in this crude approximation, which uh, is done with uh, only one direction uh, for nesting, uh, we see that along the nesting, which is entire nodal direction, this uh, wave function decreases with the size, while in the perpendicular direction, which is uh, perpendicular to entire nodal, uh, the size of the wave function limited with the cubal size. And so we get this starfish shape. Well, in some sense, uh, this is experimental result by Joe Panam uh, uh, So now it will be also explained. And uh, finally, well, it's not still finally, we get a uh, diamagnetic response due, due to cubal gas below the star, which is obvious, we know from our wishes that we, when we have diamagnetic uh, local condensates, they produce local um, diamagnetic moment. So th this is experiment, this is theory, and finally, okay, th there are many other results here. Uh, so this is solution for, for the cubal uh, stay in space, how the amplitude of cubal goes to zero outside the cubal radius, and this is specific heat at the star temperature dependence. And finally, this is what I mentioned for Antonio Bianconi and others, uh, the volume versus uh, amplitude inside the cubal of the boson field. And finally, uh, there are possibilities of bleaching cubals, and this is also, also an analytic solution for this in the bar type. And then, uh, I would also mention contribution of Picasso <laughs> because this is what I told you that uh, when temperature goes down, and should go up, and then omega is fixed, and so the effect doesn't disappear. And this is his famous picture of the woman going up, down the staircase. So it means that when temperature goes down, the M goes up. Uh, so. Uh, this as a conclusion, what is uh, overlooked in this theory, of course, we still have not considered the interaction between cubals. Uh, the transport properties due to Johnson junction between cubals also is not considered. Uh, the uh, spectra of uh, fermions outside cubals, which form a second band, because outside cubals, uh, the spectrum of fermions is very different from inside. Uh, is not considered, uh, and also uh, maybe this could be also an idea for a dark matter because if there is superconductivity of uh, quarks in inside the cubals in the universe, then it explains why there is a total beam in the gluon field, which is taken by hands by Goldman and Rosen. Thank you. So your, your field, the M, is a complex field, as you as you yes. emphasize. Yeah. Yes. But when I look at the Lagrangian, it couples to the particle hole. Term. Yes, yes. So well, just by looking at the Lagrangian, I would say it's a real field, which is not, uh, no, not charged. No, no, no. Uh, just one second. <laughs> I'll show. Uh, it is uh, simply in the, in the interaction uh, Lagrangian and Antonian, there is also uh, Conjugated term, which is this is uh, Hermitian, oh sorry, uh, Hermitian conjugated term. Uh, this field. Uh, th there is my problem. If I change the phase of M, yes, it couples to C dagger and C. Yes. So it is obviously charge zero field. No, no, because then it would be C Q uh, dagger and C Q plus Q uh, of the uh, density wave uh, to the right. You, you can check. It's my I, I, the I, I see I that, but, but it isn't this uh, uh, just a set component of the spin density wave, no? Yeah, you can imagine. The spin density all wave all is not, all is all not all charged. Light. Oh, but uh, this is Matsubara time. So you have e to the power minus I only get tau here, and e to the plus I only get tau here in the conjugated tau. This is, if you look at the usual form, it's the same. Precisely, but it is not shocked. Yes. Yeah.